Once you guys got another video on what to look for in a mini PC. I have so many people asking me which mini PC do I recommend. So I thought I'd make a quick video explaining what to look for when purchasing a mini PC. The first thing to look for is the best bang for your buck. How much you want to spend and try and get the best specifications for your purchase. Another thing to look out for is if you're buying these on AliExpress or any other place, make sure the adapter suits your country. You don't want to be using adapters like this. Next, we have the mini PC itself. This is a pretty small form factor mini PC. So it's super important that we have good ventilation and good airflow in the mini PC itself. This has a mesh on top and mesh on the sides to help dissipate heat. It's also important that you have the right correct ports on the mini PC itself and have enough USB ports that you're going to need for all your peripherals. You can see we have a new USB type C port on the front here, which is essential for modern computing. And we have a couple of USB type A ports. That ventilation on the side is going to help dissipate heat inside the mini PC. And we'll check the temps on this mini PC a little bit later on. If you need more than one Ethernet port, then go for one with two Ethernet ports like this one. This has two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports. If you have more than one monitor, it's important that you have display outputs to make sure it supports a number of monitors that you need. You may have to get rid of one of those Ethernet ports to be able to have multiple uh, display ports on this device. There's no Type-C on the back here, so if that's a deal breaker, make sure you have Type-C ports on the back and on the front. If you're looking to attach an external GPU at some point, make sure you have the port available for that on your mini PC. Otherwise, you don't have to worry about it if you're not looking to do that. Next, we're going to have a look inside. You can see this does have an, a fan in here as well, which is going to help keep everything nice and cool. And it's also another big fan that covers the GPU and the CPU inside the mini PC as well, which is going to keep this nice and cool. We'll test the temps a little bit later on. Now, storage is really important. If you're looking for one with an internal SSD type storage, like a two and a half inch drive bay in there, make sure you buy one that actually allows you to do that. This particular model doesn't, but you can see we do have memory in here. Another thing to look out for is the latest models. Some of them have the surface mounted uh, memory modules on the board. So you can't change the actual memory or upgrade the memory or anything like that. This model allows you to go up to 128 gigabytes. This comes with 32 gigabytes of memory. You can check to make sure it's nice branded memory as well. Depending on the price you're paying will determine what type of memory you get inside there. This has the latest uh, DDR5 memory inside here. Now you can see this does have a Kingston one terabyte drive in here. It's important that you check what is the maximum amount of drive storage you can put in these. This one will allow you to put two four terabyte drives in. You can check their website for more information. It's important because some of them don't allow four terabyte drives in their actual uh, slots here. So it's important that you're getting one that does support that. If it says maximum two terabytes, that's all you're gonna be able to put in there. This one allows you to have a maximum of eight terabytes total inside this mini PC, which is plenty for a mini PC. You got your wireless card there, which you can also replace and upgrade. And we have our memory, which is upgradable. So it's important that you're not having surface mounted components like memory because obviously that's not going to be able to be upgraded or changed now there is tons of them available on amazon and they're always doing flash deals so always look out for one that is doing the best price possible but it's also important to look at reviews to see whether they are any good because there is quite a few available out there this particular model you can pick up for 379 pounds there is a little voucher right there and that's a pretty good price for a mini pc of this specification you're getting 32 gigabytes of ddr5 one terabyte nvme drive with one more spare and you can change those to two four terabyte drives and they support pci express 4.0 
You've also got two LAN ports, which are 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. Now, this one has a Ryzen 5 7640 HS CPU. That's a pretty powerful CPU. So this makes this mini PC a good all round mini PC for video editing, media creation or even gaming because it does have that Radeon 760M 2000 MHz GPU built in there. It is on board graphics. It does support 8K at 60 Hz, this particular mini PC. So it does quite a bit. So if you're looking for something that is pretty powerful, that's going to be able to cover all of those things, then something like this might be something you're looking at. If you're looking for something for basic computing, i.e. browsing the web, doing some emails, watching YouTube videos and things like that, then this might be a bit overkill. You might need something with eight gigabytes of RAM and maybe a lower end processor, maybe an N150 or something like that. But the single core score for this one is 2,544 and the multi-core score is 12,168. And the GPU score is 30,283. So this is quite a powerful CPU. The CPUs on most mini PCs are surface mounted to the motherboard. Uh, only on some you get actually socketed CPUs, but most of them are surface mounted. The good thing about this one as well is it doesn't force you to sign into a Microsoft account during setup. You can just quickly skip all of this and go straight into a local account. So who is a mini PC for? I get a lot of people saying, don't bother buying a mini PC, just buy a laptop. It's portable and it's more powerful and blah, 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 right? But at the end of the day, a mini PCs have come on leaps and bounds over the years and you can pick up some really decent mini PCs. So who is a mini PC for? It can actually replace your desktop. It's got lower power draw. The only thing it doesn't have is a dedicated GPU. Now, if you're a hardcore gamer, and you need to have play your AAA listed games on high frame rates, then obviously a mini PC is not going to be for you unless you use an external GPU. These mini PCs have very little power draw, which means you're saving on power. If you need one that mounts to the back of a monitor or a TV, then make sure you get one that has a VESA mount with it and you can mount it to the back of the monitor, which frees up space on your desk. They come with Windows 11, sometimes Windows 11 Home or Windows 11 Pro, but you can install Linux on them. You can run a server from them. You can do pretty much a lot with a mini PC. I've made loads of videos showing you how to do that sort of stuff, home automation and things like that. There is quite a bit you can do with a mini PC. So it's got many different uses. So even if you're doing 4K video editing, there's mini PCs out there that can handle that as well. And there's ones out there that can play games pretty decent as well at pretty high frame rates. So depending on what you're looking for, a mini PC can replace your large desktop PC. So let's take a look at the temperatures because a lot of people always assume that they get super hot and they overheat. Well, maybe you bought the wrong mini PC, but you can see here I'm doing a CPU torture test here and the temperatures are floating around about... 66.4 so far and it's cooling down 67.5 68 and it is starting to climb a little bit but there is no thermal throttling that's also important when having no issues with power and let's go back up to the top we're running about 70.8 71.5 and it will start to plateau out and start to stay at that level and you can see we're at about 72 celsius here and it's starting to cool the system down so this particular mini pc is pretty decent you're not going to be torturing your mini pc like this but you can see it's started to stabilize now so it's pretty much that simple find a cpu that you need for the types of work that you're going to be doing on that pc make sure you have enough ram and it's not surface mounted memory so you can upgrade it and it's got upgradability. Also, USB ports, make sure you've got enough USB ports on that for all your peripherals and for the things that you want to do. Storage, make sure you've got plenty of options for storage and it's fast enough for what you need it to do. Display outputs is also important if you're having multiple uh, monitors on your system.
They are the key sort of things that you want to look out for, really. And if you're looking for something on a budget, there is plenty of decent ones out there that are pretty cheap that you can pick up on flash deals and you'll be able to replace that aging computer. And it will probably draw less power and be more powerful. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Quick apology to people's names who I might have missed on the list previously. I do apologize, but hopefully everything is updated right now. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.